Hey, how's it going? It's Nate with 864 Tactical, and we got... I'm Randy with Phoenix Gun Range. And we're going to look at something different today. All right, okay. what do we got? Well, we've already done different PCCs. Yep. Okay, we did the, uh, well, we did the High Point 995, which that one came out pretty good. I was I was pleasantly surprised with that. Um, we did your Caltech. Yep. Okay, and we haven't quite figured out what's going on with that yet, but when we do, we'll let you know. Uh, but today we're going to look at something that it came out in 23, 22 or 23, late 22, early 23. It was late 20, uh, early 2023. Uh, it was for uh, giving it shot show. Oh, okay. We're okay. going to call it a fancy backpack. We'll let you do Yeah, so I brought, I broke out my backpack, okay? We'll, we'll just swing over here to show, show you my backpack. Right. I mean, the backpack itself isn't anything fancy. It's just a nice little gray backpack, you know? Got little handles here to hold it up like this. You can take it up this way. I, I would definitely, I would call this a tactical backpack, okay? And I'm going to tell you why it's a tactical backpack. Some of you might already know the answer to that question. But for those of you who don't, you're about due to see. This was put out by Smith & Wesson, okay? This is the Smith & Wesson FPC. Okay, it folds in half, it drops down to 16 inches, it comes in this backpack. All right, so you can just throw it on your back and go with it. I've got several different ammunitions in here, or a couple different ammunitions in here. But what's really neat about it, now I put an optic on it, you get all these little pouches to be able to store stuff in. I think I got ammunition in one of those. But uh, it's got little Velcro straps to hold it in place. Undo the Velcro, you pop it out. And what's different about this one, rather than being like the Caltech was, okay, Grab your charging handle right here, pull it back just slightly, and it folds out sideways, and then it locks back in place. So you have a minimalist type of um, stock here, but now you have a full-size rifle with the same grip as the MMP series, all right? The other thing that's nice about it, and it's kind of unique if you look at it, you can see two magazines there. I have a magazine that's in it, which is empty, okay, 17 rounds. Then you got a little lever here. If you push this side down, it actually releases the magazine on the opposite side. Okay. And then you push this one down, it releases the other one. Each of these are 23 round. And these come stock with the gun. That's how it comes with those three magazines and everything you see here minus this optic. All right. So you got your little lock and everything in there, just like you do any other one. You got your uh, information packet and stuff. Your charging handle. Again, it charges kind of like an AR, because this is your charging handle. Okay, so it charges like an AR. It pops in regular pistol caliber round. This one here is chambered nine millimeter. They're, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that they're looking at bringing it out in other calibers as well. But right now they have the nine millimeter out. And quite honestly, I think it's a nice looking gun. It's got the little blade trigger in it. It's comfortable. It's lightweight, aluminum fore end instead of plastic. It's got your M-lock rails. It's got a Picatinny on the top, and they're all, the Picatinny I believe is plastic. No, it's actually aluminum, sorry, my mistake. But it's got the typical sandpaper grip on the back so you can hold onto it, it doesn't slide around. And it does go the whole way around, it's even on the front strap, okay? So, typical magazine release on the side, which doesn't interfere with anything, it's easy to reach. And the best thing I can say about this is because of the size of the package, it makes it very easy. And when you're shooting it, when you're done shooting it, this little piece right here sticking out, just pop it forward and she folds right back over. And if you notice, the optic stays on it. It does not affect that optic at all. So it becomes a very small package. So we're gonna go ahead and get this opened up here. And I'm gonna load up a magazine or two we're going to go with the stuff that killed the Caltech or killed the uh, high point. I'm going to throw some of that down and see what it does with it. We'll just put 10 rounds in it for now. I wish they would have used a colored follower rather than gray because I don't, I don't know. That gray, you don't see it too easily unless you're really looking hard. All right, give me a minute here and we'll get you loaded up with some mag with some ammo now i do want to make a disclosure here this 
for lack of a better term, is not a virgin gun. Okay, it is a brand new gun, yes. But I always put the guns, when I get them for the range, I always put them through at least a 50 round test to make sure they're gonna function before I try to market them. And this did fine with that. I had people that were curious about it, so I let them shoot it. So it's got about 100 rounds to it, but I have not cleaned anything. I did not do any pre-shooting maintenance to it. Didn't oil anything, didn't lube anything. So it is just like it would come out of the box with a little bit of extra carbon in it. All right, so give me a couple more rounds here. And we'll get it up here. And you know what, Nate? Since I've already fired this thing, and we need you to pop your cherry. <laughs> okay, let's get you, you want red or green? It don't matter. I'll put you on four, give you a magazine. Now your your safety on this is a cross bolt safety up on the top. Okay. Okay. So that way you know where it's at. Red is dead. Yep. So we're gonna let you go ahead. We'll take that second plate here that hasn't been beat up on, unless you want to go with the smaller one. I don't care. Yeah. You wanna go with the smaller plate? Don't matter to me. Well, you got a red duck. You should be able to find it. Yeah. Well, we gotta turn it this way. I guess. Don't wanna look at me. All right, we're gonna get off to the side here a little bit, get him in focus. Okay, there he is. Actually, I think I'm gonna come more to the back of him here. Okay, you're going there? All right. Got the safety off? <laughs> Yep, that's that. All right. So what do you think of that little girl? You know, it actually has a little bit less recoil than I expected out of it. Okay. And it definitely feels like an M.O.P. with a little bit <laughs> well, of uh, it, it makeup. Is. It's, it's, it's basically an M.O.P. with a long barrel. Yeah. Okay, and then they put a stock on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a really good shooting gun. At least I thought it was good. Um, I was able to, at 20, 25 yards, put tight groups, you know, less than an inch. I like the, the blade uh, trigger on it, the blade safety trigger. It definitely, versus if I was going to compare it to the kel the trigger feels a lot better. I'm not, I don't like a lot of grit myself. Um, it's a little gritty for me. However, if you like grit, this is going to be perfect for you. Um, that's one of the main reasons I never carried a, uh, what is it, the M&P 2.0s or the shields. I never cared for the grit of them. Yeah, they got that sandpaper yeah. type grit, like skateboard tape. For me, I would have to take a little bit of the grit down on it with, I'm well, not What sure. I'm thinking though is as you're shooting it, just, I mean, the front isn't too bad. It's the back that's yeah. real gritty. But I think as you're shooting and it's moving around, it'll take the sharpness off of it. Yeah. And it's definitely a comfortable hold too. I like where you got the red dot on it. Yeah, I don't like the red dot back too far. And I think that putting it up front like that, it gives you a better, I'm a big, I'm, I'm a big, big advocate of shooting with both eyes open yep. and keeping that peripheral. And by having it that far up front, you keep a full peripheral vision. Absolutely. Yeah, and I actually like the gun, I really do. And it's one of those that I'm definitely gonna be marketing and selling. And so that's what, 110, we're gonna pound some more through it. Absolutely. So, go ahead and look at some of the features on it. Talk about what you want to talk about. I'll load up some. Absolutely. So, like he was talking about earlier, it does have that uh, the two spots for the extra magazines. Standard 17, and then it comes with, uh, what are they, 23 round mags? 23s, yeah. Two 23s. So, straight out of the box for, I want to say, what, sub $800 gun? Oh, my God, no. It's not even near that. Uh, what exactly we're, are we're talking right around the six hundred dollar point range? Okay, so it's a sub a sub six hundred dollar gun, depending depending on where you go. Yeah, depending on where you go. I mean, some places it might run six and a quarter. So for about a hundred bucks more than I spend on my Caltech, you could get this, which it's a lot lighter in my opinion than the Caltech is, even with the optic on it. 
and of course it doesn't have the magazines in it at the point but well, what's nice about it is i like the side pull these versus. are factory extended magazines exactly so and i do like that side folder feature and so people don't go crazy about it yes the gun is empty and you cannot have a loaded round in it to fold the gun over so that way youtube doesn't have a carry well, it would never be able to go off anyhow because nothing be able to hit the primer exactly it's an easy fold gun quick snap ready to rock i don't really have anything I, else to I say i put 15 it. in it because it takes too long to load 23 but go ahead and rip it well how about you rip it and i'll load a mag for you okay that'll be fine See, now the nice thing about this, like I said, this is a 23 round magazine. Let, let me get over here and focus. This is a 23 round magazine that we got in this one, okay? You can see it's an extended magazine. You can see the extended base plate. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different because my first 10 are gonna be 115 grain. My last five are 124 grain. So you'll probably hear the difference and hear the difference on how it hits. But it's nice to put different ones through it so you can see what it can do, okay? So we're going to run 15 rounds through this, and because it is a uh, manufactured extended magazine, I'm pretty certain it's going to run okay. I don't think it's going to have problems. So let's uh, get her ready, right on, ready to dead. Let's pop it up there, and we're going to feed up a target. Which one do we want to go after? Okay. Now, where were you at? Okay, I'll go with this one. Can you see, can you see that one in there? Yes. All right. Charge this up. Let her rip. And all right, I think we're empty. That was fifteen. And you can see all the bigger the pattern was on that thing. <laughs> she holds pretty good. Like I said, she holds pretty good. Um, I do like the red dot on top. It does make it nice. And the way the stock is, when you punch it in here and you bring it up to your cheek, I mean, you fall right on the red dot. It, it's not hard to find. All right. Uh, again, I got to agree with you. The trigger on this is much nicer than what was on the Caltech. Okay. Honestly, when I got into the shooting, I really didn't even feel the texture of the grit. Yeah. All right. So and I think that that's one of those things that as you sweat and as you use it, you know, it's going to wear down, get the sharp edges off of it. Yeah. So that's just the way they built them, I guess. That's only my complaint from a no grit shooter. I, I'm not a huge fan of the grit, but well, at the same point. From the competition point of the house or the competition side of the house, I want that grit because when I get out there in the heat of the summer and I start sweating yep. and I got sweat on my hands, I want it to be able to fill into those little holes in that grit and still be able to get a good purchase on that. So it's going to stay stuck to my hand, so to speak. Absolutely. So, but I, I really like this and I'm like you, I, I like the side folding effect. Okay. I think it's great. And just so everybody knows, it also has a threaded barrel, so you can suppress it. <laughs> What's the thread on that one? Uh, it should be a standard thread like you have on any other 9mm, which is what, uh, I forget what it is, half 24? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, so yeah, this is, believe it or not, with that firing going through, this isn't even hot for me to handle right now. It's surprising. Yeah, feel that. It, wow. dis it dissipates heat great. But yeah, half by 24 thread, standard thread for 9mm can, so you'd be able to put a, a suppressor on this. Not a problem. And that comes standard. That's not something you gotta order extra. Yeah. Rip it some more. Give me this. You got Sounds one? Good. All right. <laughs> so what do you think it's easy to recover fast follow-up shots yeah I, I was looking at that and i noticed with this one you you didn't have any hesitation about uh 
hitting the plate while it was swinging. No, that to me it was easier to manipulate it to go here to here. It's a lot more comfortable to hold. I can go back and forth. It was like I said, it's lighter than the the Caltech Sub 2000. And another thing that's nice about it, and I've had people ask me the question, the charging handle. It's non-reciprocating, so you don't got to worry about it hitting you or hurting you. Yep. Okay. Once it's charged forward, the handle stays put, just the bolt moves. That's it. So yeah, I mean, I, I, it's a pretty good gun. I can't complain about it. So that's what you had. Uh, ten. Ten. I did fifteen there, and we did ten on the first one. So yep. That's another thirty-five. So we're at one hundred and thirty-five. Well, let's keep going. I just short loaded them to ten. That way, it's easy to count. Okay. So we got another ten here. So now it's my turn to play with it a little bit more. All right. I think I'll do some of this transition work. See how it works for me. Okay. Should be in there. Well, ten goes quick. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Easy transition, especially yeah. with that red dot being all the way out front like that. You can just pop around there and just move back and forth in yeah. you know, rapid pace. And that, honestly, I lost track of the count. I wasn't even counting. It's just next thing you know, I'm going, okay, dead trigger. Must be yep. empty. So now we're at, what, 145? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, this is actually the first gun that Nate and I have put that many rounds through it on initial testing. Okay, now, like I said earlier, Nate and I didn't put the whole 145 through it, but we had 100 through it before we started. Okay, and there was no malfunctions, no hiccups, and I've had multiple people shoot it, so the style of shooting that people use isn't going to affect how it shoots. I've had this red dot, I, and normally I would tell people, you want to zero the red dot to your eye because your length of pool is different, your eyesight is different, and all those things. But this has been zeroed to my eye, and everybody who's shot it has been able to shoot it extremely well. So that's a testament to the accuracy of the gun. And the fact that the gun has basically an MMP 2.0 setup here. Yep. You can stage your trigger. I'll just take one. You can stage your trigger, and you can actually use your, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, control shot. Yeah, you can do controlled pairs with it. But when you get on the wall, you're, you're sitting right off the brake. So you're already on the wall and it's just a quick rapid yeah. follow up and it just pop, pops right through. It does have a phenomenal trigger in it. and I, I am pleasantly surprised with that. And I tell you what, I I was kind of leery of it. I'll be, I'll be the first one to tell you. I when I first like, seen this thing come out, I thought, okay, it's a novelty gun. I'm not sure I want to mess with it. I but, feel like if you, you get it broken, you do the whole thousand rounds through it, it's going to be a complete and total different beast. Oh yeah, and I'm biased. I'm not a big nine millimeter fan. Hey, I shoot a lot of nine millimeter. Like he said, with the uh, Caltech he has there, he shoots forties a lot. I carry most of my carry guns are nine millimeter or forty five. Okay, so this thing, if I put it in that backpack and I carry you know hundred rounds or two hundred rounds in it, and I got my pistol on my hip. I'm good to go. I got a rifle for longer ranges. I got the pistol for up close. I couldn't ask for more than that. Yeah. Except for, you know, my really long range stuff, but yeah. that's a different animal. You got altogether. a nine mil cartridge. Don't right. ask too much. Yeah. I mean, and I tell you what, from what I've seen different people doing with this, it'll reach out and touch things at a hundred yards with no problem. I want to see it on the dueling tree. Well, that dueling tree, unfortunately, is only meant for 22. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Not this one. I want to see it on a dueling tree. Oh yeah. Imagine you could back up just, Boom, zip right up. Yeah. Well. You got another 10 right there. All right, let's do it to it. So hopefully, hopefully everybody's enjoying this because I'll be the first to tell you I am. <laughs> and here we go. And yeah, she can run fast. <laughs> I wasn't sure I wanted to run it fast like that. But then I thought about it for a second. I said, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to run it like that, I'm going to Go ahead, it like beat that. it up. I don't care. It's what I want to do. I want to beat it around. I want to see what it, I mean, I don't want you to throw it on the ground, of course. No. But I want you to put it through its pace of shooting so we can see what it's going to do. <laughs> hey. 
That just ain't fair. Ten ain't enough. Yeah, we can long load them and run the 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 twenty threes. Yeah. Well, I don't think I got enough ammo left for that. We didn't bring any more boxes down. I think that was that it. Yep. Okay. That's why I was doing tens. Okay, that's fine. Well, throw that over there. So we'll give our final thoughts on this now. You know what my thoughts are. You can tell this by looking at my face. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not the biggest Smith and Wesson fan. Okay. You know, Smith and Wesson's been around for a long time. I've and they've got, been making quality guns. I've got a couple of older Smiths. Uh, my very first handgun I ever bought was a Smith & Wesson SVE-40. And it was a great gun. I loved it. It got me into where I wanted to shoot more, and I eventually bought my everyday carry. And I do have an old, uh, was it 38, uh, 38, 38 police special? gun? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a state police special. And I love that. Now that Smith & Wesson is releasing a PCC, <laughs> Sub six hundred dollar gun. Oh my yeah, and I tell you, you just you guys all just watched us. I mean, we did some controlled shooting, and then here at the end, we just let it rip to see what it could take. And I, honestly, I've seen a lot of different guns that when you do that, it won't feed all ten. No. Okay. You get going fast enough, you wind up with a stove pipe, or you wind up with a double feed, or a failure to eject, you know something. And that just ate it up and spit it out like it was nothing. And that's yeah. almost two hundred dollar or two hundred rounds on a right out of the box gun. Yeah. The first had fifty rounds through it, then you put another fifty through it, and then we just put over fifty through it. So we're yeah. almost two hundred rounds. Well, we put what? Uh, well, that one box was full fifty, and then I had two partial boxes that had uh, I want to say fifteen twenty. So there's another seventy rounds on top yeah. of it. So, so we're at one hundred and seventy. 170 rounds straight out of the box no lube yeah no throw a little grit in it let's send it I, i'll tell you what i i can't be happier with the way it performs yeah I smith mean, and wesson has definitely stepped up their game with releasing this <laughs> yeah. and they're bringing out the new uh ve 2.0 or oh they've already got it, it out is. they've already got it out and i think i've made the comment before that i have the original uh SDV or SD9 VE. Yep. And I want to grab the 2.0 and I want to do a side by side comparison with them. I want to see how much difference there is in it, how much it's changed. Is it for the better? Did it do any good? We'll grab a Cigna as well, the older one. The original one, the one that caused them all the trouble. Yep. But yeah, hey, and this is what we want to do. They, you know, we want to let people know what's out there. We want to let them know, you know, is it good? Is it not good? You know, what kind of TLC is it going to take for it to run? You know, these are the little things that a lot of these influencers that are out there, they'll run through it and they'll tell you their thoughts on it. But that's about it. Okay. They don't have, how do I want to put this? They have nothing vested in it. Yeah. Okay? Where me, it's my reputation and my name that's going to be vested in this because I'm looking to market these for the range. You know, yeah. It, it's not that I'm going to go out there and give somebody good marks. Nobody gets a free, a free pass with me. No. Okay. If it runs good. The trigger on that thing, very smooth, very, very responsive, okay? I think give it 500 rounds, that trigger will be butter. Oh my, yeah. And like I said, the action of it, the bolt and everything, it was smooth. It didn't have that clunky banging, okay? I like the feel of it. And again, that's another thing that when I finally do decide to break it down and clean all that up, okay, it will be a lot smoother. Because I'll get all the grit out of there and I'll put all new lube in it and oil and whatever. And that thing will run like a champ. All right. It runs like a champ now. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, I'm, I'm not the greatest Smith & Wesson fan. Okay. I like Smith & Wesson. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't like them. But it's not my preferred gun. All right. They do make a good quality product. And they've had a lot of them. I mean, from their wheel guns all the way out. As a matter of fact, Smith & Wesson is what helped Taurus turn the corner. Yeah. Okay, without their influ or input and uh, help, Taurus would still be known as the crap guns. And I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not. They're, they're actually, did you see the new uh, G4 carry? Yes. Okay, that that's something that's exciting. I might have to get my hands on one of them because I got the G4 up there, the, the GX4, I guess it is. Um, but I also wanna get the entire lineup of the G3s. Yeah. Because okay? I got the G2. I'm looking at um, purchasing the G3 uh, full frame. Yeah. 
Um, I want the G3 uh, sub. I'm not sure. I don't. I'm know interested the in the are. X frame. Yeah. I like. I want. I want to play with that X frame. See what I can do with it. And again, like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you want to see. Right. We'll get it. We'll do our best to get it. It may not be right away, but we'll do what we can. And I tell you, with okay, I'm not going to do an ad here. I was going to do. A, I was going to do a selfless plug here. Go for it. Nah, I ain't going to do that. You know where we're at. We're in Lawrence. If you want to find out any information, just come on down or give me a call. I'm listed in, in the internet, so you'll be able to find me. Yep, and uh, 864 Tactical on TikTok, the videos that he's in, I have a pinned comment right on the video that tells exactly where he's at. Oh, yeah, and we love to have people come down here. I own the range. I'm also the chief instructor down here, and anytime somebody new comes on the range, I spend time with them on the range. I want to get to know that person. I want them to get to know me, and I want them to realize and feel safe and comfortable being here. So I spend time with them. I help them a little bit with their shooting. And I haven't had any complaints about me helping them. You know, if somebody doesn't want me to help them, fine. I'll step back and just let you shoot. If you want to learn and you want to train, I'm more than willing to help you with that. I got a lot of training courses. You can find me on uh, Facebook and I posted the upcoming courses in there. So if there's something you're interested in learning, hey, I might have it already listed. I got over 140 different courses with a lot of different drills. So. Whatever you want to learn, I'm sure I can figure out some way to get it to you. <laughs> you got hills and I got a swamp, so you want to do the rabbit crawl, let's go. <laughs> I got hills, I got brook. I got a brook back there, so we can get wet. <laughs> but uh, I got all kinds of stuff, woods, desert. That's <laughs> what we're standing on, the desert. But uh, anyhow, like I said, if you're interested in the FPC, my opinion right now, 170 rounds in, my opinion is go for it. Just pull it, no pun intended, just pull the trigger on it. I'm sure you're going to be satisfied with it. I don't give many things a 10 out of 10, but I got to give this a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, I there's a couple things I would like to see, so I can't really give it a 10. I mean, I'd like to see more of a padded butt stock on it, okay? I mean, it's not uncomfortable. It's not. It doesn't hurt you or anything, but I, I just that little rubber padding for some reason, I kind of like that feel. Okay, um, and like I said, the grip on the, uh, the pistol grip, the texture, it will slowly wear down as you use it. Okay, so I don't really consider that a negative. And again, like we said, you know, as we shoot it, everything's gonna start really falling into place and working a lot better. And then once I clean it up and get it all oiled and lubed, it's gonna be quite the machine to be able to fight with, you know. And I, I really like it, I do, I like it a lot. I like it too. <laughs> hey, we agree on something for a change. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> All right. So, with that, like I said, Nate at eight four or eight six four tactical. Okay, he does a lot of different things with. I don't know what all do you do stuff with a little bit, you know, merchandise stuff. Yes, uh, I've got hats. I'm working on a shirt brand. I'll have sunglasses by summer. Um, there's a whole line of stuff that I'm working on getting done, and. Probably by the time my shirts and sunglasses and hats release again, we might I might even do a gun giveaway. Oh, there we go. Hope you might suck me into that because well, <laughs> you don't have to buy fifty hats or spend a thousand dollars. Right. You buy a hat, you get entered to win. There you, you go. You buy two hats, you get two enters to win. And again, just like with Nate, I do. When I first opened the range here almost two years ago now, um, I, was, I think I was three or four months in. And I gave away a tactical shotgun, a fully dressed out tactical shotgun, 12 gauge, had everything except for an optic. And I even put, I even threw in a hard case, ammunition, and a range pass to come down here and shoot it. Okay, the whole package was roughly a thousand dollars. Yep. And I don't care, I don't care. I want people to be able to protect themselves. I want people to be able to learn to protect themselves. So that's why I do stuff like this. Um, I'm going to be setting up for competitions here in the near future. I'm looking at bringing in competitions that are geared for 22 caliber, 22 long rifle. So that way everybody can get it. It can be family fun, you know? You get the kids up here shooting the little uh, AR-22 type guns, win some money. Because <laughs> most of what's gonna be there is gonna be cash prizes. And once I get set up with the uh, Metal Madness, there's gonna be a lot of vendors that'll be down here. And if you're a member of Metal Madness, you'll autom automatically be drawn into the prize drawings. Yeah. So. You can have the worst day of your life shooting. 
and you could still go to the prize table as the number one. You know? So, I mean, these are just a couple things that we got on the, on the slate for down the road here. We're going to be doing some more range improvements and stuff like that, adding more pits. So, we're going to continue to grow. And with you guys' help, we can grow a little bit faster and a little bit better. Absolutely. And this is pretty much my home range when I do a lot of the content, simply because I can do whatever I need here. I, I have my own property. You've seen on some of my previous videos I've shot on. Well, this property... I can shoot literally anything. You bring a full auto with your licensing for it, you can shoot it here. You bring a 50, you can shoot it here. I've done that. <laughs> if you look at my Facebook page, you'll see pictures of me shooting a 50. Okay, so yeah, I, I've had, I got a guy that come in here, he had a couple of different ones with drum mags and everything. And he had his paperwork with him. I said, have at it, have fun. Yeah. The only thing that I ask is that you follow the safety rules and you stay safe, okay? Yep. The way the range is designed, there's no no possibility of somebody from another pit shooting you because they're all back to back. So you're always shooting away from the other people. But there's always the op off opportunity for somebody to do something foolish or, you know. And the pits are staggered yeah. on top of being back to back. They're, right. You got one here and then one here facing this way, one facing that way and then that way. Right. And then you got the private pits. It's got, you know, when you first step up at the, you know, 10 yard marker, you got eight foot berms beside you and the back wall is 30 feet in the air. So when you step inside that and all the, all those are outfitted with steel and the steel is angled at 10 degrees. So you could be three yards away from it and shooting at the steel and it's going to deflect it straight down. So you're safe to shoot that close to the steel. Okay. Well, shoot that close. Oh, I've done safe. it. I've done it. I've done it. I look at it this way. If I get involved in an altercation where I have to use a gun, I can't determine what the distance is. Yeah. So I may have to create that distance, okay? So if I'm three yards away, that's almost 10 feet. Okay, you're at nine feet. Yeah. So nine feet, I mean, that's a formidable range. So yeah, by all means, start at the three yard mark and work your way back, see what you can do with it. But yeah, I do encourage movement. I encourage the use of a holster. Okay, I have a lot of classes where I teach uh, different types of movements, uh, different tactical things. Also, um, we have a lot of classes that teach uh, home safety, okay? I also, just so that everybody out there knows, I also have classes for you, okay? I had a young man down here today, seven years old, and we brought one of my pistols out for him to shoot because it'd be easier for him to shoot it, and we worked with him, and he was actually shooting very well with it. His father is very safety-minded and was very good with working with him, okay? So I kind of put the basics in there, and I just stood back and watched, and I let the dad do what he was going to do with it, okay? Because he likes to have the father-son time and you don't need to have somebody looking over your shoulder, but I'm still keeping a vigilant eye to make sure that everybody's safe. Anything else? I think we're good to go. Okay, now that you know all about us, tell us a little about yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> tell us anything you want to do. Use the comments. I even reply back. Oh, I, I take the too. time. Every time I see a comment, whether it's good or bad, or you tell me how many times I missed my shot or I need to clean my gun because I have a malfunction, I will still comment back. No problems. Right. And I'm the same way here at the range. Okay. I I ask everybody, you know, if you like what you did down here, if you didn't like what you did down here, if you don't like the way it is or, you know, whatever, leave me a review, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't matter. I'm going to respond to it. And if you leave me a bad review, I'm not going to respond in a negative manner. I want to know what I can do to make it better for you. Yep. Okay. And that's the whole purpose of those reviews for me. It's not just to pat myself on the back or pump myself up. I want to know what people want. I want to know what they want to see, what they want to be able to do. And if it's reasonable and I can make it happen, I'll make it happen. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. I know we got on a tangent there. We were talking about the uh, FPC and then we got on a tangent about what we do. So I just wanted you to understand who we are and what we, and why we do what we do. Okay. I just want people to be safe. All right. And uncle Sam was nice enough to teach me a lot of skills with guns. So I figured it'd be time to pass it on to other people. And it's 2024. We're going to have fun with our crazy bananas. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye.